Today we're going to do a calibration video with a 7000 series tank and the Apollo operating system. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go over to our X30 and set up our monitor so it's ready to do a calibration. With the calibration it allows you to do a multi-tank calibration but for today we're only going to calibrate one tank and, in the, and it'll be in the front tank where we have wheat. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to put wheat into our number one tank. So we'll just touch on the product. It'll bring out the list for that product. So the first bar we'll have to hit product name because we're changing the product in that tank. And now it'll bring out our products list. Now we can scroll down to find the product that we're adding to that tank. Once you find the one that you want, highlight it and then hit the green check mark. Once you have the product in the tank, you can change your rate increment. So what the plus or minus symbol does, up or down. And then you can enter your preset rate, preset rate 1 and preset rate 2. So if you want to change it, just touch on the button and then you enter the weight that you want to calibrate for, you want to seed for. So today we'll do it for 100 pounds. Just type in 100 pounds and then press the green check mark. And then if you wanted a preset 2, you can touch on it. Say you wanted to have preset 2 of 85 and then enter it in. And then below that it'll tell you your calibration factor for that metering auger with that product. And then it'll tell you the density. Also at the bottom of the page, if you scroll down, it'll show you your range limits. So it shows you what your whole low and high range will do and that corresponds back to the three sprockets. Once you have the product in the tank, we'll press OK. And then it'll ask you if you want to fill that tank. For, this, for today we won't be filling the tank, we'll just be calibrating it, so we'll just hit no. And then it'll ask you if you want to program preset rate 1 as your requested rate and we'll want to press yes. Now that the tank is set up for the calibration, we'll want to now bring out our configuration tab. And just by touching the wrench and the gear, we'll bring out our configuration. The first thing you're going to want to do if it's a new monitor is set a manual speed in there for what you calibrate for. So you want to set it to somewhere close to what your average seating speed is. So you'll just hit manual speed and now you can enter that speed in there. So let's say we want to calibrate, we seed at four and a half mile an hour. Press OK. And now that's set up. So from here, now we can go into the calibrate screen. To do that, all we have to do is hit the multi-tank calibration. And then under multi-tank calibration, you have automatic calibration. And then it starts our calibration wizard. From there, you just read and follow the steps through to finish the calibration process. So it's telling us to hit the arrow, and now our X30 is now set up to go back to our tank to finish the calibration process. Now we'll move back to our tank and the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our remote and also turn on the power to our conveyor. On the remote then we're going to hit the fill button and fill cal button, hit it once It'll send your hydraulic flow up to your conveyor or your auger. Hit it again and it'll respond on the remote by saying fill and cal. And you can also hear the hydraulic bypassing through the priority valve. Once you have that, you're ready to do the calibration. Now we'll want to find our scale. With this new scale, it allows you to save the tear or the weight of the pail within the the scale head. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just turn it on, wait for it to come on. Once the scale comes on, we'll pick up our calibration pail and it'll show you the weight of the pail. Now we'll want to zero it out or hold that tear. 
just by hitting the on and zero button, push and hold it for 15 seconds. Once you've held it for 15 seconds, let go. And now you'll see on the screen that it's zeroed the pail out. Now that we have our scale ready, we'll want to get the rest of our tank ready to do the calibration. So now we'll go under the tank, we'll pull out our downspout out of the airstream and put it into the calibration spout and then we'll want to throw a pail in there. Once we put a pail underneath, now we're ready to do the calibration. So we'll want to come to our keypad and we'll want to turn on the tanks that we want to calibrate. Right now we're only doing tank one and you can see that it's green and the red light is flashing waiting for you to turn the master on. So the first thing we're going to do is hit our master. We're going to get a little product out. We're going to charge the meters. Once you get product coming out, the meter is charged. The reason you want to charge your metering augers is you don't want to have any false revolutions. Once you've done that, we'll want to take that pail out so we don't weigh that little bit of grain. Put the new pail under and then we'll want to hit the reset button. Touch and hold it until the green light flashes. Now it's reset the X30 and allows us to do the full calibration. Once again, our tank one is turned on and we're ready to do the calibration. Hit our master on and now we'll, ca we'll put product out. You'll want to get a good sample size. The bigger the sample size, the more accurate your cal factor will be. Once you get enough product, turn your master switch back off and now we can grab the pail and weigh our product. You'll want to make sure that it has the tear weight on the screen. And now we'll get our weight, which is 25.75. So now that we have our weight, We'll go back into our X30 and we'll follow the steps through. Right now it's telling us to go to next. And now it's showing us that we can enter our weight under the actual weight. So we'll touch on the button and now we'll enter that weight which was 25.75. And then we'll hit the green check mark. Now that we have our weight entered, We'll want to go and press next. And now that we've done the calibration, it's showing us our old cal factor, our new cal factor, and our percent difference between the two cal factors. So now it's showing us 10%. So maybe we'll want to go back and do our calibration process again just to verify that that new calibration factor is what we want. So right now we'll just save. Press OK. So now that we've done our first calibration and we found that our percent difference was out 10%, all we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to verify that we didn't do something wrong in our calibration process and that our new cal factor is actually what we want it to be. So again, we'll hit that multi-tank calibration. And then we'll hit automatic calibration. And then it's telling us to go to next. And now the tank is set up again to go back and do that calibration. So now we'll go back to our tank. Everything is set up already. All we have to do is throw a pail underneath the machine and catch another sample weight. We've already charged the auger prior. So we'll turn on the tank that we want to recalibrate. Hit our master switch and then run out our product again. Once we get a good sample size again, we'll turn that master clutch switch off.
Grab our pail, and then we'll have to weigh it again. So we'll turn our scale on, and when you turn the scale on, make sure that it has that weight in there of the pail. So we weighed our product and we have 16.90. So now we can take that back to our X30 again to verify our calibration process. So now we'll go into the X30, we'll hit next. Now we can enter that weight again, so we'll hit the button for actual weight. And now we'll enter that weight, 16.90. And then the green check mark. Now our weight's in there. We'll press next. And now you'll see that our tank one, our old cal factor and our new cal factor really hasn't changed much. Our percent difference is 0.90%. So that's just showing us that we verified our calibration process was right. And now we can feel comfortable by saving that. And then hitting the green check mark. And now you're out of calibration and you're able to go and seed. Now that we're done in our X30, you'll want to come back to your tank, clean everything up, put the scale away, change your downspout, put it back into the airstream that you're wanting to use it in. And then the last thing you'll want to do before you leave the back of the cart is turn your conveyor power off and that'll kick your fans back in.